Good morning, everybody. My name is Barry Schwartz, and this is the Search Buzz Video Recap. Today is Friday, March 1st, and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable at sdroundtable.com. Google had two days of volatility, one over the weekend and one a couple days ago. We'll get into that. Um, there were a ton of Google bugs in the past month or so. We'll get into that as well. Um, Google has this most read articles. How do they know what's most read? Being sarcastic there. Um, some big news we got to discuss. And Google's not so look, not looking good to a lot of SEOs. So we'll get into all that. So definitely stay tuned. And thanks to Bruce Clay. Bruce Clay is one of the founding fathers of the SEO space, doing search marketing optimization since 1996. Bruce is big into SEO training, so check them out at seotraining.com. You can learn a lot from Bruce. He's been doing this for a long time. And check out bruceclay.com for more information about their consulting business. Thank you so much for, to Bruce and to Bruce Clay, his company, for sponsoring. Deeply appreciate it. And definitely check them out. Thank you. Okay, so first up, over the weekend, actually started around Friday last week, a week ago through Saturday, there was some massive Google search volatility. In fact, I actually wrote about it on a Saturday night um, after you know catching up on the news for the day. Um, the tracking tools were, I haven't seen them that high in a long time, but the chatter was not there at the same level, meaning SEOs were not chattering and not talking about such a big update like as much as the tools were by far. Like, SEMrush was like over nine. Similar web was spiking like I never saw before in a while. Um, Mozcast was really high. SERP metrics, advanced web ranking, AccuRanker. I mean, all the tools. You can see the list here. They're all pretty much super hot. Uh, but the chatter wasn't really there. So I'm wondering what exactly happened. Maybe there was some type of feature change that they didn't handle these tools. Usually these tools are able to handle like if features change. Um, they isolate the rankings from the features often, but sometimes they get a little messed up. Uh, but there are a lot of people actually who saw a lot of changes as well, but it wasn't as, as much as the tool would normally re re report on. So it's not a match with them. But if you didn't know any ranking volatility over last weekend, um, not the March 1st, 2nd weekend, the one before that, um, definitely not alone. Again, that was around February 24th. Second, we saw, again, volatility, um, both with the tools and a lot of chatter. Um, on February 28th and 29th, it seemed to calm down today. Um, maybe it was a leap day type of update. I should have called it the leap day update. I didn't miss the opportunity. But there definitely was a lot of chatter. We're still waiting for that official confirmed update from Google. Google's been talking about big changes coming to the search results, an algorithm update that will update and make everybody happy, hopefully. Uh, but we still are waiting. But yet we have these little unconfirmed updates that aren't so little. The tools really did spike again. Not as high as over the weekend, but they definitely did spike again. Um, and there is a lot of chatter around that update. So if you saw any changes around the 28th and 29th, the leap day update, if you want to call it that, um, there you go. Google has posted its court, a court document in the Department of Justice trial. It's basically its post brief. It's like letter to the court after everything's done and so forth. Greg Sterling spotted this, basically saying that search quality issues are not there. He basically said search quality continues to improve, meaning Google keeps investing in their search engine and their search quality has improved and improved over the past 25 years of them being a company. It's just interesting to see. Definitely take a look at this document. It goes through a lot of stuff. We'll discuss a little bit more later about what I said about Microsoft, but Google says their search quality keeps improving all the time, although right now it seems like their search quality is not so great. Talking about search quality, there's been a number of bugs with Google search over the past couple of days, including Google had dropped the link under the local pack to see more local results. It was gone for, I think, several hours. Google got it back after a lot of complaints. It was definitely a bug. Google did not respond to, miss, uh, respond to me about this question, but again, it came back, so obviously it was a bug. Uh, Joy Hawkins was the first, I think, to spot this or publicly spot this and post about it, uh, but it was re resolved after several hours. Also, uh, a couple weeks ago, Google removed the news tab. Everybody's like, oh, Google's trying to kill publishers. It was a bug. It was gone for a couple hours as well. Um, Google's tested, people saying Google tested removing the news tab. I don't think so. Google's comment, and let me read it to you. Here it is. The news filter is available to users now, and we do, do not have plans to remove it. In an effort to better understand the preferences of our users, we were testing different ways to show filters on search. And as a result, a small subset of users were temporarily unable to access one of them, some of them. It was a bug. It wasn't like Google was testing removing the news filter. They've tested something 
and that resulted in the news filter going away for some users. I saw a bunch of people report this to me um, la last week, including Shaheem on February 21st. First, uh, Sarah, Sarah also reported it. I was not able to replicate it, so I was like, oh, maybe it's just some weird bug. And it was, but again, Google's not really testing removing the news tab. Google was just testing something else, and it resulted in the news tab going away for some users, and Google fixed that as well. That was gone for several hours as well, but it was fixed. Another bug that seems that Google did not fix yet is hotel and travel results in the European region. It seems like a lot of these results are getting hijacked. It's showing, let's say, TripAdvisor, but linking to some spammy website. And it's not a bug on the publisher's website side. It seems to be a bug on the Google end. And I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but JC, the SEO strategist over at TripAdvisor, noticed this, reported a couple week, uh, week ago or so on February you know, it'll be out a week ago or so. And John Mueller is aware of it. Danny Sullivan is aware of it from Google, but nothing seems to have happened yet. Uh, but they definitely is aware. So if you are in the travel hotel business and you have European search results, you should definitely take a look because you might be getting your results hijacked. Talking about another bug, Google had a bug where their file type operator combined with the site operator, where you want to say, "I show me all the PDFs on this website. That stopped working for a couple hours as well. It was fixed. Uh, and then Google Analytics... Um, has this issue for the past couple weeks, I think a few weeks now, where it's showing a huge surge in real-time traffic and traffic from Poland. And I'm not sure exactly what's going on. There are a lot of complaints about this in the Google forums, the Google Analytics forums, um, but it seems like it's like Russian slash Polish spam, um, and it seems to be a big issue for a lot of publishers because it's, getting, it's really clogging up all their analytics data and making it hard to understand what's real traffic and what's fake traffic, and people are having a hard time figuring out how to filter this out as well. I don't see it on my sites yet, but I guess maybe one day I'll get hit, but we'll see. Referral spam has been an issue with analytics tools for a long time, but this seems to be some unusual spike there. Google last night um, announced or released quietly Structured Data Carousel's beta. Um, it's like this hotel slash um, host level pack where it shows up for like local results, like restaurants, hotels, stuff like that, as well as some product and other results where it's a carousel uh, there's a new type of carousel, which is a beta version. Um, there's new beta structure data in the early adopters section. Um, and here's some of that documentation. I'm not exactly sure how it works exactly, but there's new documentation around how to implement this on your website. And it's just a beta, so I'm not exactly sure. But it's a way to add up and, and jazz up your search results for those types of local slash events slash product results. So definitely take a look at that. It might be able to help you get some more visibility. Google seems to be testing a carousel called most read articles. Google's always been saying, we don't look at clicks, we don't look at analytics, we don't look at Chrome data for search rankings, um, but it's not rankings per se, it's a carousel, it's a feature. This was spotted by Shaheem, and you can see this most read articles shows up at the top and it shows like review type of articles, and I guess Google's able to say these are the most read. Also Brody Clark spotted this the next day on mobile, um, but it's very interesting to see Google actually showing most read articles. Also, Google's testing something called Popular Opinions as a search carousel as well, a different type of version of that. This was spotted by Brody Clark. Here's a screenshot of that as well. Google is testing new local panel designs with expandable menus. Um, we saw Google testing this for normal knowledge panels for a while, or using this for normal knowledge panels for a while. Amy Toman uh, told me about this. It seems to be on desktop and on mobile. M um, Mike, Mike Blumenfeld as well spotted this. Um, it seems to be rolling out here and there. Um, and it has these little expandable elements. So you can see, oh, show me the pricing, show me the reviews. It's pretty interesting. I'm not sure if it's, I see it personally. So it must be in the US as well, not just, not just the European Union. So we'll see what's going on there. Google's also showing this weird disclaimer in the reviews for everybody, actually. Let's say beta questions. Not sure what it is exactly. Again, spotted by Amy Toman. And there's a little um, disclaimer that says, Google services include that, blah, blah, blah. And for beta questions, your answers may not be displayed publicly during the experiment and may be visible to you and or others participating in the experiment. We may delete answers after the experiment. So I'm not sure what these beta questions are. There's some documentation on it. I don't know how to differentiate between normal reviews and normal questions, but keep that in mind that if you, you see that, you're not alone. Google's testing on, on um, new justifications in the local pack called People Like, and it's shaded in the blue color. This is spotted by Kushal. Um, here's a screenshot of that. Kind of like how it stands out, but it talks about what people like about a restaurant or a certain location in the local pack. Google Analytics added a new default report for Google Ads. 
Um, Google moved a bunch of these ad advertising reports in a new section um, in GA4 to make it more concise and easy for people to use. This was spotted by Thomas Excel initially, um, but then I also spotted Google actually posting a, a little like a prompt in the Google GA4 interface saying, some reports for uh, some reports move to advertising, and it goes through all that type of stuff, which is pretty cool. I guess Google's working on improving the default reports in Google Ads. Talking about Google Ads, Google Ads for Performance Max report, the new uh, the Google Ads Performance Max report placements section, the placement placement section report, where you can actually see where your Pmax ads are showing the, where they're placed, will now show search partner network sites. There's been a lot of complaints. Um, over the past several months, especially after a, a major report came out that said Google's just showing your ads everywhere, um, showing your ads your, your ads on porn sites and drug sites, whatever it might be. Google's not letting you really opt out fully. There's some way to do that, actually, but not fully. Um, and then Google says starting in March 2024, I think it's March 4th, it's going to actually, so I guess Monday, Google's going to start showing search partner network sites. You're going to be able to see where your PMAX ads are showing on like which websites and you might get upset by that. I can't wait for the people showing their reports, showing them where their sites, where their ads are showing across different sites. Google Ads has this new color-coded um, feature, which they've been doing for a while, but now it's showing the limited by budget status and color code. So it might show red, it might show yellow. I guess that shows how severe that is. That was spotted by Thomas Sell as well. Thank you for spotting that. And then Google Ads support reps may be using Google Translate to communicate with you. So you might be getting somebody, let's say you're in the US and you're asking for support for Google Ads, it might be somebody speaking who speaks Spanish using Google Translate to respond, to understand your question and respond in English, which is pretty interesting. And that was also spotted by Thomas. Um, Bing, um, Bing Deep Search maybe start testing again this week. Um, Bing, as you know, Microsoft Bing launched Deep Search, I think like, I don't know, November, December. It was a very limited test. Then I saw in the wild uh, like a month ago or so, and it was horror. <laughs> it, was like, it was so bad. I mean, it was just like unusable. Bing then took it down that weekend uh, and said, we're going to go ahead and go back to the drawing board and make sure it's easy or easier to use and it's more stable. And then um, Mike uh, Mikhail Parahan, the Microsoft CEO of advertising and so forth, commented on February 28th at 7 o'clock at night saying basically it's it's back on a large flight hopefully this week, meaning they're going to start testing it again for everybody and a lot of people and not just everybody uh, starting this week again. I haven't seen it in the wild yet, but I'll, I'll test it again this weekend and see if I can find it. So if you want to play with Bing Deep Search, it might be live this weekend. Um, and as I said earlier, Micro, um, Google announced or released a court document. And in that court document, it not just said that its search quality was getting better and better and better, which most SEOs say well, it did not or is not right now, maybe over since 20 years ago versus today it did. But Microsoft, it also said that Microsoft tried selling Bing search to Apple, but Apple didn't want it because of search quality issues. And it, it was Microsoft offered, said it said from CNBC, Microsoft offered to sell its Bing search engine to Apple in 2018. Google said in the court filing earlier this month, the documents from Google antitrust documents was unsealed on Friday. And then it said it tried pitching Apple to make Bing the default search provider in 2009, 2013, 2015, 2016, 2018, and 2020. But again, Google had a Bing... Apple didn't like the search quality and said Bing, Bing was not, Microsoft was not investing enough in Bing to make the search quality improve. Very interesting to see this documentation. Definitely take a look at that. Um, and finally, I did a survey this week on Twitter or X asking SEOs, do you like Google more or less now than you did in the past? Now, this survey almost had, I think, 1,800 different response, 18, 17, 16, 17, about 1,800 votes. That's a lot of votes for a Twitter poll. And about 68% said they like Google less now than they did before. 25% um, said they like it the amount the same. And about six something percent said they like Google more now. Google's perception and the feeling about Google amongst the SEO community has degraded significantly in the past several months, in my opinion. Obviously, the past several five years or so, but more so in the past several months than I've ever seen. And I think that has a lot to do with all the DOJ. Uh, Department of Justice revelations, um, the click data confusion, um, the shake your cushions type of thing going on, and of course search quality in general. In the past, since the helpful content update people, in September, people have been not not been happy. In any event, I do think Google is working on turning that all around, but we will see. Um, Google's been in this position before. I don't think it's been this bad, but we've seen Google been in this position before around search quality with Panda and Penguin, um, and so there are several updates with core updates and so forth. But again, I haven't seen it this bad in a while. And I do think Google's aware of it, and hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll sort themselves out.
In any event, thank you so much for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. Again, my name is Barry Schwartz, and this is the search news we covered over the Search Engine Roundtable at SEOroundtable.com over the past week. Again, thanks to Bruce Clay for sponsoring. Definitely check them out at BruceClay.com and SEO training. Everyone, a great, safe, healthy weekend, and I'll see you guys next. Goodbye.